So this is the process for me. It's easy to get out for me. Getting back in is a little bit more precarious. Let's see. I mean, sir, I mean, the seatbelt is probably should have probably should have undone the seatbelt before. So. Okay, I mean, let me put this. I've got a uh, cover. For All right, so I'm with my grandpa. She's got a plane, and uh, we're gonna talk about it. What is this plane? Let's uh, leave it off. <laughs> This is a Tango from Revolution Aviation out of Williston, Florida. Uh, it's very much like a glass air as far as performance, uh, but there are far fewer of these aircraft. This is frame number 29, and I purchased it a year ago, and we've been working on it ever since. Yeah, hasn't flown a lot in that, that time. It's about time to get, get it in the air. So a year ago, I flew it from, we did some work on it in Williston, Florida with Denny Funmark, the owner of Revolution Aviation, uh, X-60 out of uh, Williston, Florida, a great airstrip. So we spent three or four days together finishing up some mods that I had uh, in mind. And then we flew it, I flew it from Williston to actually Crescent City from coast to coast and uh, had some interesting uh, adventures on the way, but it flew and performed great. And since then we've done some things like Constant speed prop and and uh, some further work on it. That's right. Well, yeah. Sort of As we said, it's so. been yeah. uh, it about a year since we uh, flown it, up. and it's got so a couple issues coming. to work out. It's, it's got a small well, oil did, leak. Uh, we got to figure that out. So paint off the cowling. The oil? Well, I did the oil pressure spring. Yeah. I took the top plug out and I spun the motor oh, okay. to make sure. Or the fuel leak coming out of the drain port here. Once you have a dry start. Okay. Both of those things are but, you know, gotta get fixed. Very nice. That side here, I can these. A lot of help I was. <laughs> I'm gonna put these with. Oh. The airplane's too light. So the oil leak. I don't know if you could look under here, but you can see streaks down down this and. It's oily. Oh yeah. Oh, I'll wipe my finger out. You can see. Yeah, yeah. See that glistening. It's all coming from right there. Ah, got it. The oil. The prop governor line. It's on that bit. Is it on the top? Right. I can explain what that see is. See how it's a little. Are, do you know? We've been yeah, right yeah, there on yeah. the bottom. Yep. There she is. So easy as that. Prop yeah. governor line was what was leaking, and that helps. That it, that changes the angle of attack for the blades increasing the about the bite it's kind of important now when you get these guys to go in Liam if you push you gotta get the pins to center first like that see how it wants to seat yeah. in and then a little four and a half Let's go ahead. there it goes like that and then you gotta keep them pressed in So I found that tapping method works pretty good. It works really good, actually. I like this setup a lot better than screws. And, and, uh, you can hope for on the leak. Yep, just do it a little snug it up. And you're right, it's the last thing. All right, let's talk about stats. What about we got horsepower, 
What kind of right. you got on it? So since it's an experimental and I didn't build it, I, I was helpful in rebuilding it, but it's a IO uh, 370 uh, Titan. It's a continental Lycoming clone and it develops 205 horsepower. Depends on the dyno, but um, so this originally came, I flew it from Florida uh, with a three bladed fixed pitch prop. And uh, this airplane is capable of a lot more performance with a uh, constant speed prop. So we added that in floor, or here. And uh, so it gives me a lot of climb performance and takeoff performance uh, with those 205 force. Um, it's uh, empty weight. This The girl put on a little weight over the winter that I was unable to fly it the last 10 months. So this one empty is 1,405 pounds. And uh, it, useful load is about 800 pounds. It grosses out, the book number is 2,200 pounds. So I can still put two 200-pound uh, adults in here and carry virtually the full fuel load. 74 gallons, you said? It actually carries 90 gallons of fuel, which is an entire wet wing. So it, the, the wings carry uh, two cells, a forward fuel and an aft fuel tank on both sides, of course. So 20 and 25 gallons or something like that on each side. So it, it has a range of, depending on how you fly it, and a tailwind and altitude, two airspeed. Um, Theoretically, we can go 1,500, 1,800 miles. That'll do it. Nautical miles. Yeah. If, yeah. The, if the pilot can go that distance, it'll go that Yeah, distance. I can't go that far. But it, I, I took uh, seven legs to fly it from Williston to here. Uh, I had one unintended stop. More on that later, but um, it, it performed very well. I was very pleased with it. Uh, Florida Floridians don't care about how cold the cockpit is, but I found at 14,000 feet that it was a little chilly, so we've kind of uh, addressed some of those uh, air conditioning issues. Right, before we get in, uh, what does the performance look like, and how do you figure out performance on an experimental? Yeah, good question. Uh, this, this is an experimental. so. Unlike uh, a certified aircraft that may have tabular data and charts and graphs for performance because each aircraft is identical, this is, as an experimental, I can configure it with any air, airplane, aircraft engine I'd like or prop. And of course it's built differently. So there are no real numbers that are produced by the factory because every individual builder um, builds his own individual airplane. So this aircraft doesn't have a lot of charts and data. I'm in the process of building those through flight testing this spring and through the summer. It's been done once before by a grad student who built his own number 24, this is number 29, and he did a pretty good job of comparing the factory claim numbers. For instance, takeoff rule, the factory claims is somewhere around 550 feet, uh, all the way up, again, depending on gross weight, density, altitude, and fuel load all the way up to you know 1100 foot takeoff roll and he compared his numbers to those numbers from the factory. What do you reckon this takes off in now with the constant speed? And um, well we're we're still working those numbers out but um, you know I easily again gross weight density altitude um, it should I should be able to max perform it with standard load depending on what you call that with, uh, you know, 700 feet takeoff roll. And that's the fully aerobatic capable plane, I believe, right? Yeah, this is, uh, with the extended tanks, uh, 90 gallons, I can still get plus five, negative four. So it's a little reduced than the uh, standard tank, which is plus six, minus five Gs. I don't expect to be doing any negative G stuff or not much, but... Um, Very fun. But it's fun to be able to go upside down once in a while. The other thing I like about this aircraft specifically is the stabilator. So this, you mentioned the X, X1, and um, I'm an old jet guy, and so uh, the fully flying tail, instead of a horizontal stab and elevator, um, I like very much. Uh, it's very sensitive. 
Yeah, and it's sensitive. It's just, it's a very, very positive control and very delicate, but uh, that makes it enjoyable. It's quick to respond and, and maneuver as well. So I noticed there's not a lot of headroom here. <laughs> Well, that's great, Liam. I'm glad you pointed that out since you're six foot plus. Yeah. I'm 5'11", and it's pretty tight. We've done a lot of work on the seats, so you may notice, I know you have, Liam, that the pilot seat left side is shorter, uh, lower back. The right seat for my spouse just is higher so she can relax in flight. And uh, I like to look upside down or over my head while I'm going upside down. So I kept the standard seat height, but these are really well cushioned. Uh, they're also electric heated seats. Comfortable? Yes. Yeah. Indeed. So you can see we've still got a little more touch up wiring, interior lighting to do, uh, a boot to add to the stick uh, bases. But um, I'm extremely happy with the interior and, the, and of course everyone is unique and different as an experimental. Yeah. All right, so we're moving it out so we can clean it off, wax it, um, and if we're doing work with fuel sump drain and any leaks out, we don't want it on the floor. We'd rather have it out there. So, pulling it out. And now it's easy. See, two fingers. I'm going to face it this way. Yeah, let's face it. Up here. Ah. Just gave him a little wash off before we polish. Wow. Oh. You rid of hanger dust and such? No, but I mean. All right, Lils, what's happening today? We we're at the airport and we're just getting some fun flights in today. Um, Tango has been out in the mechanic for a few days, a few weeks, you know. Um, we shot half of our Tango footage, here comes Liam, um, um, a few weeks ago and we're back at it again. We're gonna film the rest of it and just some other fun flight stuff. Liam's getting his check ride in again for his solo, so he's getting signed off for that. And yeah, should be fun. Howdy. Good timing. Oh. Perfect timing. New autopilot head at the bottom center radio stack. So that allows me to operate the autopilot entirely from that. Autopilot controller. Brakes on it. That's the black handle there in the bottom right. Brakes. Yep. So on this one, it's only on the left side brake, so yeah. I don't need it. Um, um, you know, I'll lean it in the pattern and then come around for um, touch and go or whatever. If, if you want, you know, grab a handful and everything forward. Mm -hmm. But some guys don't, don't actually um, advance the mixture unless they're doing a go around or an option. Down to its and it can run that way for about 30 seconds and then back up to 2000, let it run for another minute, uh, lean, and then full rich again back to 1700. Check the left, check the right, and they should drop should 75. Tube doesn't have anything in it, fuels. I'd have put some fuel in it so you can taxi to the fuel pit and that'll be with you and I in it. And then um, I'll jump in this. So you guys will drive down to the fuel pit after leaving.
What's the plan? About to go fly in the tango. It's gonna be awesome. In the tango? What? Yeah. Where are you going? Um, the Applebee Valley area. <laughs> we're we're gonna fly over um, the farmhouse in the vineyard. So that should be fun. Schwanky. Schwanky. Where are you going? Same place, just slower. <laughs> but with more style, you know. Clearly. All the way up. You can't turn down individually by stumbling. I'll wait for them a little longer. You just kind of step on the seat and then forward and then hang on to this guy and kind of slide. Oh, We don't worry about headsets just yet. Seatbelts next. You do the seatbelts and then I'll get the door. Okay. 